SRO. <laughs> Standing room only. Good morning, people. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Pentecost. Woo. The fire of God is coming down and reaching us, and we stand and sing, How Holy Are You, Lord? Oh 
Welcome, welcome, welcome to King of Kings. You may be seated. <clears throat> As we gather, I encourage you to smile and wave and say welcome. And those of you at home can uh, smile and wave back at us too and say welcome. And do you have like a magic mirror? Do you remember that? From Romper Room, I think it was looking through the magic mirror and saying hi to everybody at home. Well, again, welcome. It's Pentecost, and without Pentecost, nothing really matters. Christmas doesn't matter without Pentecost. That's an unbelievable story. God becomes a man born of a virgin. Yeah, yeah. Easter, a suffering and death of the Son of God. But the Holy Spirit comes and opens our minds and hearts and enables us to believe, and not only to believe for ourselves, but to share with others this good news that God is love and he loves us and he has a plan for our salvation here and now and for all eternity. All of that depends upon Pentecost. So welcome to our Pentecost worship service. A couple brief announcements. Um, we need ushers at this second service, a scheduler. So if you're interested in helping out scheduling ushers for a second service, uh, let us know in the church office and we will put you to work. Also be aware that in, well, not this week, but next week, we've got King of Kings preschool and kindergarten graduation. So it's a big day for those kids. Monday, June 5th at 6 and 7, and you are invited to come and celebrate with us and with the children their graduation. My understanding is that most of our preschool and kindergarten graduation graduates are going to pursue higher education at elementary school. So God bless them as they continue with their education. God bless us as we worship together. So please stand for the invocation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. So, tell us about the worship songs. We are singing the lion and the lamb, the picture of Jesus coming on the clouds. I think of Jesus last week ascended and the disciples were like, he's coming back soon. And he sent the Holy Spirit. So let us sing. Slain for the 
sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion. drawing us near to him, giving us hope, giving us a God to worship.
to the holy place where your presence is our treasure. Take us in to the holy place where our worship gives you pleasure. Take us in where we can know Please be seated. We turn our attention to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what appeared to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. 
Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Here ends the New Testament lesson. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. From John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. On the last and greatest day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not yet been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Here ends the gospel lesson. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So please be seated. Susie Hennig, our director of Christian education, is going to teach the children a children's message. So come on up, Kylea and Jeremiah. Good. Good morning. I have something for you. Do you remember last week? Well. <laughs> we do. Well, look, I have a balloon for you again. Which color would you like? Okay, how about you? All right. Whoops. So, um, there is something kind of different about this balloon from the last balloon. This one's my balloon. Yeah. So, Last week, you got balloons, and we talked about Jesus' ascension, and he promised to send the Spirit because he had a mission for the church, right? Now, what is different about the balloons that I have for you this week? Yeah, what's it missing? Air. It's just kind of a floppy balloon missing its air. So, I have here... This is my big juggling act. Are you ready? All right. I have scripture, and I have my balloon, and I have my air. So, the balloon is missing air, right? So, it needs something to breathe some air into it. Otherwise, it's just this floppy little balloon. This is kind of like the church. When Jesus gave the mission to the disciples, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And what did the Holy Spirit do? Came in like wind, a strong wind, right? And then we hear in the Holy Spirit is with the disciples, and they start talking 
in languages that they don't normally speak in. And people are hearing in their own language. And then the Spirit is speaking through Peter about Jesus. And people are hearing the word in their own language for them to understand. And the church is born. The Holy Spirit has filled the church. And the church is born. And the church is then ready to do the mission that Jesus has given. And I'll tell you, Peter says that you need to go out because he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Go out and tell people about it. The beginning of our scripture today, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The church cannot do its mission without the Holy Spirit. And that's why last week Jesus said, let me flip my page, Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of of the earth. That is our mission. That is what Jesus has called us to. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit also. We are the church. So we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, then we can share the news about Jesus with other people because the Holy Spirit gives us that power. Did you know that? Now you do. So we're going to say a quick prayer and I am going to send you to the back to Miss Terry and she is going to give you your worship bulletin and your sticker and I will let you keep your balloons and figure out how to breathe into them and make yourself a nice balloon also. Are you ready? Dear God, dear God, thank you for the gift. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. And for filling us. And for filling us with his power. With his power. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. Thank you, Susie, for the message. Thank you, boys and girls, for coming up. Yes, so today is Pentecost. As we remember and celebrate Pentecost, there are certain things that we must not forget. Pentecost is one of the three main celebrations on the church calendar. The other two are Christmas and Easter. Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost go together. No one of the three can stand alone. Christmas is really nothing apart from Easter, and Easter is nothing apart from Pentecost. Christmas, in the fullness of time, at the right time, according to God's perfect plan, God sent his one and only son into the world, born of a virgin, born to save us from our sins. Jesus, the son of God, became one of us so that he could reveal to us God's love and grace and salvation. Easter, God's plan of salvation includes all of the events of Easter and Holy Week, Jesus' joyful entrance into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the Last Supper and betrayal Monday, Thursday, his death on Good Friday, 
and then his triumphant resurrection Easter Sunday morning. When we consider the events which lead up to Pentecost, we will see that the role of the disciples is minimal, to say the least. They were like those empty balloons that Susie showed us. The truth is that the disciples weren't much help, especially when things got difficult. On Easter Sunday morning, the disciples weren't at Jesus' tomb, waiting for him to rise as he said he would. When the women reported that Jesus was risen, they initially dismissed their claim as nonsense. It was unbelievable. All the disciples doubted, not just Thomas. And even after Jesus appeared to them repeatedly, they were not inclined to share the good news. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus ascended back to heaven. Before he left them, Jesus instructed his disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they were clothed with power from on high. And that happened ten days later. On Pentecost, the disciples heard the power of the Holy Spirit coming. It was like the sound of a mighty rushing wind. They saw the power of the Holy Spirit when he came. It was like tongues of fire resting on each of them. They experienced the power of the Holy Spirit when he enabled them to believe the good news of the resurrection and then to proclaim that good news in other languages. Some 3,000 people believed and were baptized that day. The secret was out. The rumor is true. Jesus is the Messiah, and he has risen from the dead. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, the disciples were transformed from an unbelieving and fearful group hiding behind closed doors, empty balloons, into a powerful and faithful group filled with the Holy Spirit, willing to do anything to share the good news about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But note what else happened. Some people mocked them. Some heard the cacophony of the disciples proclaiming the gospel in different languages, and they mocked them and said, they are drunk. And controversy followed the birth and growth of the church. The disciples performed miracles and proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ with great power in many languages, but almost immediately a great persecution arose against the church. St. Stephen was martyred. Saul of Tarsus led the resistance against the believers. Nevertheless, the disciples considered it a great privilege to suffer for the name of Christ. After Pentecost, the same unbelieving people who cowered behind closed doors for fear of the Jews boldly proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ without fear of the consequences. Today we celebrate Pentecost, the events of the first Christian Pentecost, the Holy Spirit coming with the sound of a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire and the special ability to speak other languages. These things do not happen frequently, but the Holy Spirit does continue to come to us and he continues to give us the power we need to believe and to live faithfully as God's children even if we are mocked or persecuted. St. Luke, the writer of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit, records the specifics. St. John records more of the general purpose of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. <coughs> St. John identifies the main purposes of the gift of the Holy Spirit, forgiveness and salvation. Jesus came down from heaven to seek and to save the lost, to suffer and die for our forgiveness, and to be raised for our salvation. It's all so unbelievable, but God continues to bless us with the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can believe this good news for ourselves and proclaim it to others. Luther explains it this way, the explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit. He says, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. 
But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and keeps the whole Christian church on earth in Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. The questions regarding miracles, tongues, and healing fall into second priority to the ministry of proclaiming good news, the good news of the forgiveness of our sins in the name of Jesus, the good news of Jesus who suffered and died and rose again, the good news of Christmas and Easter. Even in the life and ministry of Jesus, the miracles he performed were of second priority. They were always performed in support of the gospel message. The first questions we might ask ourselves today at Pentecost are, one, does God still give the Holy Spirit to us to enable us to receive forgiveness for ourselves and to share it with others? And two, are we also sent, as Christ sent the disciples, to proclaim forgiveness in his name? The answer to the two questions is a resounding yes. Yes, God still gives us the gift of his Holy Spirit so that we can know and trust his forgiveness, extend it to others, and proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth. A still more basic question is, why? Why does God give us the Holy Spirit? The answer is the same as the questions, why Christmas and why Easter? God gives us the Holy Spirit because he loves us. We don't deserve the gift of the Holy Spirit any more than we deserve the gift of Jesus born at Christmas, any more than we deserve the gift of Jesus crucified for our sins and risen on Easter. It's pure, unearned, and undeserved grace. A question regarding the Holy Spirit that might well come next is, how does God give the Holy Spirit? In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came with the sound of a rushing wind and tongues of fire. I've never had that happen to me, though one time I did catch my shirt on fire in a junior high science class. <laughs> the question, how does God give the Holy Spirit, is sort of like the question, how does a 700-pound gorilla get into a VW? The answer, any way he wants. God can be very dramatic and creative. It might be better to ask the question, how does God usually give the gift of the Holy Spirit? How does God regularly and reliably give us the Holy Spirit today? What has he revealed in his word? Later on in Acts chapter 2, St. Peter t preached to the crowds and answered that question this way. He said, repent and believe. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. One way that God regularly and reliably gives the Holy Spirit is by means of baptism. The Bible calls it a life-giving gift for you and your children. It is a washing of rebirth and renewal. It works forgiveness of sin. It gives new life. The Holy Spirit comes upon us and we are born again and enabled to believe. Our souls, once dead in sin, are regenerated and given new life. Our eyes, once blinded by sin, are opened and we can see God. Our ears, once plugged, can now hear the good news. Our mouths, once shut tight, are open to sing his praises and share the good news of forgiveness, just like the disciples did at Pentecost. And our arms, once as good as lame, now work to do his work. Another way that God regularly and reliably works to give the gift of the Holy Spirit is by means of God's word. The Holy Spirit attends the proclamation of God's word. The Spirit, or the Bible, says that faith comes from hearing the message of Christ. The Holy Spirit, working by means of the word of Christ, carries the love of God into our hearts, and we are enabled to trust and believe. 
The Great Commission includes teaching God's Word along with baptizing. A third way that God regularly and reliably works to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit is by means of Holy Communion here at the altar. The words of Jesus, this is my body, this is my blood, faithfully connected with the bread and the wine, the promises of God, this is for the forgiveness of sins, and his command, do this in remembrance of me, these feed our souls with the Holy Spirit. The main purpose of Pentecost was to empower the disciples to believe and begin to make disciples of all nations and proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, regardless of the mocking and persecution. Jesus is still working by means of his church to seek and to save the lost. He still gives us the gift of his Holy Spirit so that we can be empowered to do what he calls us to do. Repent, believe, forgive one another and proclaim the gospel to make disciples. When the baptized children of God are regularly nourished by the word and the sacraments of Jesus, they become strong to do those things that God calls them to do, regardless of any mocking or persecution. May God enable you to believe for yourself and to receive for yourself his grace and salvation but also to be a, fruit, a fruitful part of the mission and ministry of his church here at King of Kings. Amen. At this time, we will receive the offering. Please use the blue sheets. Let us know who you are and what your needs are so that we can respond appropriately. Thank you for supporting the mission and ministries at King of Kings. Thank you for giving online or for mailing your contributions in. And we go from... Offering to message song. So, Mo, tell us about the message song. The message song talks about accepting the Holy Spirit, inviting this Holy Spirit to us. God has sent his Holy Spirit to us, like the pastor said, in the baptism, in the word, and in communion. So let us... Be overcome by the Holy Spirit that the Lord gives. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. i 
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit overcome by the presence of God, his goodness. We find that in confession and absolution where he accepts us as we are and makes us his own and encourages us and empowers us to be ever more like Jesus. St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 3, Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. As it is, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one, there is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Jesus said to his disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father, and trust in his love and forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. I have lived as if God did not matter and as if I mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not loved God with all my heart and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts, desires, and words have also been sinful. 
Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. O Holy Spirit of God, you hovered over the primordial chaos before the words were spoken, time, space, and matter were created, and order was given to the universe. We pray be present in the chaos of our world and lives, and give us your gift of patience while we wait for order to be restored. Look with mercy upon those communities that are suffering because of crime, homelessness, drug abuse, racial strife, and political ideology. Give courage and strength to your church so that we can work for peace, justice, and reconciliation. Look with kindness upon all who are coping with losses caused by the chaos of the world. Provide for their needs and sustain them through the crises. Continue to bless us with health, strength, and the ability to witness to the truth of your love during these difficult days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation as we observe Memorial Day, that we may always honor the service and sacrifices of those who have gone to war on our behalf. Almighty God, we thank you that you, lead our foref you led our forefathers to this land, that they might establish a free nation and a godly nation. We acknowledge before you that our freedoms were purchased with the blood of those who fought to make us free. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, which sets us free from sin, death, and the devil. We thank you for the blood shed by soldiers throughout the years to keep our nation free. We pray, help us to honor the sacrifices of those who have fought on our behalf, and not with words alone, but with actions and sacrifices of our own, so that they may enjoy the freedoms, rights, privileges, and prosperity that they fought to preserve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those struggling with illness, injury, chronic pain, or any sort of poor health. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great physician of our bodies, souls, minds, and hearts. You know each of us and our infirmities. Assure us of your love for and care of our brothers and sisters who are ill, those we hold silently in our hearts, and those we name aloud before your throne of grace. We pray for Danny, Daniel, Martha, Matthew, Luna, Angie, Bertha, Gilbert, Anna, Jose, Sophie, Noah, Nancy, Erica, Karen, Terry, Tiana, Tyler, Rowan, April, Doug, Ron, Mike, Roxanne, Mary, Susan, Kayla, Joan, Natalie, Maiwut, David, Peter, Casey, Ramon, Matt, Carol, Tiana, Brannon, Terry, James, Gary, Donna, Carolyn, Eric, Kathy, Jamie, Cody, Kim, Keith, Frank, Scott, Jennifer, Ella, Irene, Vi, Katie, Marlene, Verna, Brittany, Obi, Dana, Daisy, Rebecca, Don, John, Tony, Gary, Steve, Joe, Pete, Terry, and Sarah. Lord Jesus Christ, you are Lord of the living. You speak the word and the dead are raised to life. You touch the sick and they are healed. We pray speak your word of life to our brothers and sisters who are struggling with poor health. Touch them. Give them hope and courage, faith and the assurance of your love. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and enable them to experience your healing of body, mind, soul, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who are celebrating the anniversary of their new birth into the family of God by means of the sacrament of holy baptism, especially Barbara Bruce, Nairoon Beal, Ann Johnson, and Jenny O'Farrell. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the new birth of water and the word. We thank you for adopting us as your sons and daughters. Continue to bless us with your Holy Spirit and such gifts and fruits of your spirit that we will live faithfully and joyfully as your children despite the difficulties of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the men and women who are leaders of our community, those in business, politics, athletics, social media, government, education, public service, and the military. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that over and above and beyond our understanding, you rule the heavens and the earth. We thank you that our history is not out of your control. We pray, help us to witness to your rule. Help us to honor our Savior as Lord. Show yourself and your sovereignty to our leaders. Call them to greater faith. Lead them to follow the Lord Jesus so that the gospel may be freely and powerfully proclaimed to your glory, the glory of your Son and the glory of his church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our profession of faith today is Luther's explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. We believe, teach, and confess that the scripture is true, which states, God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. I believe in God the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. He will, at the last day, raise up me and all the dead and give unto me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. The Lord has done great things for his people. His unfailing love surrounds us. By the power of his Holy Spirit, he gathers us into his church, opens our hearts and enlightens our minds to know and receive his grace. The mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the darkness we were away, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the way, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the day. Spirit. 
that storm is moved for good, for the Lamb.